Hello, this is Chris Anderson again, CE Sim Golf. Let's take a look at how we're going to do some of this advanced bunker shaping. This is going to be blender work, and this is part one. It's just going to cover the geometry cleanup and additions. Uh, what that means is kind of fixing some of the errors or inconsistencies in the polygon faces in our bunkers meshes before we start to alter them. A lot of this is what's the most time consuming and also what's probably going to be much easier when the version 4 tools of OPCD are released. So let's take a look. Um, this is what the mesh looks like right after cut and conforming to our Unity terrain object. Uh, this is a very simple bunker. You can see um, what it has is, let's take a look, um, we have an outer layer here, which is the bunker lip. Then there's one more inner layer followed by uh, these converging triangles, which kind of lead into the center mesh. Now, none of that maybe seems like it matters, but when we start trying to adjust things, what you're going to see is a huge amount of triangulation if we're moving the lip. It's all going to move to a point. So we want to make changes to this outer ring and um, in the detail of that mesh. So here's um, a look at how we cleaned it up. This is after maybe five minutes of cleanup. This is just a screen capture. What you might notice now is it's a very consistent amount of space between outer edge and where these triangles converge to create this kind of loop around here. If we go back and look, you can see there are some spots where there's a short connection here, here, here. And so we've gone in and cleaned up and I'll show you how. So that's consistent. Then we're gonna add, after we've done that, we're gonna add geometry by creating additional loops. So you can see there's a loop here, another loop here. So we've got one, two, three, four there. And we're gonna use relax modifiers to kind of space things a little bit. And if we need to, we can do some subdivision. So that's what this is gonna cover and probably what takes the longest. Now, if you look at what the version four tools are gonna to give us, this is a much more complicated bunker. But you can see the version four tools are actually gonna give us a loop here here, 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 and then into triangles. And if you look, these triangles are nice and consistent all the way around, even on a very complicated shape. I mean, there's barely any deviation at all. So the new stuff, those guys have worked so hard on, um, it's gonna be fantastic. It's gonna make this whole process much easier because we spend a lot of time just trying to get to this point right here. So here's another bunker that is a pretty basic shape, but I haven't touched any of the geometry or the mesh itself yet. You can see it's kind of a mess. This one's more of a mess than I was kind of planning on tackling, but I'll give you a, a look at how we start. Uh, I debated on if I was going to go over um, keyboard shortcuts and all that for Blender, but I think the Blender education courses do that better. I'm going to make the wild assumption that you are pretty proficient in Blender or can find that information on your own. So let's just let's dive right in here. If you remember, uh, the goal was we're trying to create uh, a, a basic loop around here. So if we look, I mean, this one's really quite a mess. But if you look up here, you've kind of got this loop. If you look at this edge here, you can see these vertexes kind of form a nice edge. I don't know if you can see with the orange, the light orange, but these are a nice distance apart from the outer side and they're creating an edge. As we come around here, not so much. Now I'm going to use edge slide, so I'm going to be selecting vertexes and I'm going to try and move them up. The reason I'm using edge slide versus just a move in a top-down view is I don't want these to end up changing the depth of the bunker. So by edge sliding, it's simply moving along the profile path it already has. I, I'm not sure if that makes sense. Let me know in the comments. I'll try to talk about it a little deeper. Now, what you're gonna see if I come over here is a couple of these 
they have geometry over here that is, um, you can see this edge is a mess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into edge mode, I'm going to dissolve it, go back in, and I'm going to create a new edge to kind of get it out of the way of everything. If you go over here, we got a real mess down here. We've got, uh, sometimes these sneak by, you don't even see them. So we've got an edge right here. We do not want that. We're going to get rid of it, dissolve edge, grab these two vertexes, join. So now we've got that same radial pattern. Sometimes we end up with so many of these joining the same vertex, it gets to be a giant mess as you go around a corner. Right now I'm going to focus on just this loop first. Here now, here the loop is broken because of this edge is going the wrong way. So again, we're going to go into edges. We're going to dissolve it, go back, we're going to join. We're going to come back up here, follow around, looking pretty good. Okay, edge slide. Here we got another rogue edge that's going the wrong way. We're going to dissolve it, go and join. Now we're coming, following my mouse. We're going all the way around. Okay, so we've got an edge that goes all the way around now. Most of my Triangular points are about the same distance away from my lip. Everything looks pretty good, but what I don't like is stuff like this. This fan is so large that when we add geometry, that's going to be kind of a disaster. So, easy way to do this is we're going to go in here, we're going to take all of these edges and get rid of them. Now they're gone. Now we're going to go up here, we're going to subdivide that edge. So, we've got another vertex we're going to put down here. Now what we're going to do, we're going to move that over there, and now we're going to start joining up stuff. So we're going to create a whole bunch of new, a new triangle basically. So all I'm doing is dragging from to select from one vertex to the middle and then hitting J. That joins. And now we've got an entirely different fan or triangulars point there. And that's at least a little better as far as spacing. Um, this one down here, also kind of terrible. This video is going to get long if I do this much, but it's going to get rid of those edges. I'm going to grab this one, divide it. Now we've got a new vertex. Go down here. Now we're going to go. Again, grab one, two, J, one, two, J. That's a join that creates an edge. So we fix the fan. Now we've got a new one. Oops, we accidentally selected both. We only want to move this. And there. Like that, we've got our geometry has been fixed. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to add geometry because we want it to be more dense right now the problem is if we are going to go in and start changing how we move things we're going to get a real sharp triangle you can see the triangle that creates because we just don't have very many faces and vertexes for the kind of work we want to do so like i said the number one goal is to respect the edges where these two meshes meet. We do not want to create holes or gaps. So the easy way to do that is to alt click on an outer vertex and it will select the entire loop. I don't know if you can see that, but the whole outer loop of that bunker is selected. Hit H, it's gone, hide. Didn't delete it, just hit it. By hiding it, we cannot alter it which means it cannot be disconnected from the mesh next to it. So that is very key. Now we are safe to play with the rest of this. So what we're going to do is let's say we want to do some edge manipulation on this inner side here. We're going to take with our vertexes, we're going to select just the vertexes in that sort of quasi loop we created. Once those are selected, we're going to tab into, we're already tabbed in, we're going to hit the two shortcut key to get us to edge mode. Now we have that edge selected. If I tried to select that edge while in edge mode, we're accidentally going to select a whole bunch of edges. So that's why I select just the vertexes, then when they stay selected, when you jump into edge mode. We're going to go control shift R, which is going to create, as you can see here, 
a loop on two loops one on either side so we're gonna go to about an equal distant area let's do about like that maybe click and that's gonna create two new loops and if we go into vertex mode we can see oh look at that suddenly we've got a bunch more faces now we can do that a second time if we want depends on how much work we're doing here so we're gonna grab all those vertexes there again go into edge mode with two boom drag until sometimes it's hard to figure out where drag until we see edges coming out boom click done now we've got a bunch of new vertexes but look at this they're all packed so tightly we didn't really help ourselves if we start moving things we're still going to see this triangle so now what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of select the vertexes that are the most densely packed through here kind of like that try not to get the ones that border the lip and if you right click and choose relax that's going to make them chill and spread out a little bit. It's going to take a second. Now, I have it on 5 right now. You can go anywhere from 1 to 10, but I, I think 5, 4, 5, 6, that's a pretty good amount. As you can see, they've, they've spread out, but they did not move up and down in the Z. They stayed on their edges, so you didn't change the depth or jagginess of your bunker. And it kind of created a little less triangulation of those fans that we were working on. Um, you know, the other thing you can do is now you've got this, all these have this very steep peak here. You can grab these and you can slide them out a little bit. Um, that might help because depending on the amount of work you do, you're gonna end up with, you could end up with some pretty stark changes, especially these that are packed so tight, we might wanna just move those out a little bit towards the centers now i only added geometry where i'm going to work on the lip but you could do it all the way around the bunker if that is where you're going to do your work the other thing you can do is you can go into face mode and you can go to these that are a little larger in here shift click i like to use the circle select i'm just going to go through here and select a few of these that are sort of in play, I feel, because they're next to these triangles. And we're gonna subdivide those. So now we have pretty equal spaced, but denser geometry all the way around this portion of the bunker that we're planning to alter. And that's really the goal that we're trying to get to at this point. So the other part of this bunker editing equation is of course the matching edge and that in this case is the rough. So you can see the rough mesh matches perfectly with the outside perimeter of the bunker and we don't want to mess with that. We do not want these to get disconnected um, but we need to add some geometry there as well if we're going to create anything like an overhang or even some variation in the lip on that side. So you can see this is a pretty clean outer mesh here. There's not much going on. Even the consistency of the, you know, there's one a little off here, but I mean, this doesn't really matter a whole lot. There's a really nice ring except for this area right here. Uh, and this is the edge we're gonna be adjusting a lot. So we do need to go in here and, and mess with it a little bit. So. We're going to jump here, make sure we're in top view. So what we need to do, I want to break this fan up into two like this that are a little more consistent. And I definitely need to add something in here because it's really, there's no density here and it's just one long span through here. So I think the first thing we're going to do, we're going to go into edge mode. We're going to delete these edges. Now, these edges have vertexes that perfectly match the vertexes on this inner bunker. Um, to see that, we could select both and tab in. Now in the bunker, we still have our lip hidden. It stays hidden, which we did earlier, but you'll be able to see if we show it, there's actually two vertexes down here. So if we click select, 
can see this is, I've selected the vertex that's moving the rough, but you can see there's another one underneath it. And you can only select one at a time, but we don't want to disconnect those. So you have to be very careful of that. And so we're going to go in and only edit the rough at this point. We're going to go in, we're going to delete these five, I think. We're going to do delete edges. And what that'll do is it'll leave these vertexes alone. They're still sitting there. And we're going to go in, we're going to delete these edges as well. Again, delete edges. Now, we've got a big gap here. Kind of scary. I know, I know. I said don't make a hole in the mesh, and then I made a hole in the mesh. But if we go through here and we join these, we're going to make a face right there. We're going to subdivide our new one. Now we've got we got a vertex right here. Now we can go through here. Now the problem is we have to do a face creation because there is no face here. There's not somewhere where we can just do a join and add an edge. We're going to have to do a face. So we have to select all three. One, two, three, F, face. One, two, three, face, face, face. You get the idea. So we're going through here. We're going to go like that, and then like that. Now, we have better geometry. And these two right here, those have a face, so we just need the two and join. So there, we have now created better geometry there. Now, we want to add some geometry here. In this case, we're going to go along here. We're going to grab the outer edge. Oops, shift select. Now we have that whole outer edge. Uh, and we're going to go in, once we have them in vertex mode, we're going to go to edge, control shift R. That's going to give us a loop. So we're going to pull that out a little ways. Again, we're going to do it a second time. That'll give us a double because we can go both directions. There, now we've got a whole bunch of new geometry. Now, I am going to alt click give my outer ring, just like with the bunker lip, H, hide, did not make a hole, it's just hiding. See, it's still there. Now it's easier to grab all my new stuff without accidentally grabbing my edge. I'm gonna hit that with that relax modifier. And that's gonna give things a little more spread out. It looks a little more like quads. Go. Now look at that bunch more geometry. And there we go. Now we've done the rough side of things as well. So now we're in the version 4 cut and conformed bunker. Oops, one underneath it. Now you can see right now I'm tabbed in and I'm in face mode. So all we'd have to do, see I don't need to go clean up anything get rid of edges, add join, make new fans, any of that. It's already done. But what I do think I might want to do if I was going to edit this geometry is I'd probably want to go in and subdivide a little bit through here, at least a little more towards the outer edge. The other thing I could do is add maybe one more loop. Let's do this. Let's subdivide. So now what we've got is some pretty dense outer geometry, but look at how uniform it is. That is really nice. I mean, that is what's going to create. We don't have to do relax modifiers to spread things out. Nothing is packed in. So all that work I just did in the old version, boom, pretty much already done. In fact, I don't know that I would have subdivided in here. That's that's created a lot of extra work in there. I mean, we could, we could go through here and do, um, let's make my selection a little bigger. We could go through here and do a relax modifier and just see what that looks like. I haven't really tried this, but let's let's see what we get. Nah, you know what? I don't think we need to. Um, but anyway, I'm rambling. Much faster in version 4. Not really even going to need that step. Uh, next video, we're going to take a look at where all this work's gotten us and how we're going to make this, how we're going to use this to 
actually make our courses look more realistic and have some variety. Thanks for watching.